gaming. Or should I say gaming? It was a pastime hobby I once loved when I was younger. Growing up, I wasn't allowed to play video games on school nights and only weekends. So every time that time of the week rolls around, you already know it, I'd be playing games all day and all night. If I don't feel dazed and need to reorientate myself when I stand up after a long gaming session, that means I did something wrong. I should also mention that I was quite a chunky kid in middle school, but when I got hooked on League of Legends in high school, alongside with an increased metabolism from puberty, I would literally skip Muse to play that damn game game, and that's how I became a freaking stick. I kid you not, skinny jeans were too big on me. However, I'm an adult now, and like many people back in 2020, I went into quarantine because that one video store called Cvid became a plague to a society or something like that. So during quarantine, here's what my schedule would look like every day. I wake up around 6 to 7 p.m., and then order some DoorDash, and then play games with the homies until like 1 or 2 a.m. or something like that. Then I order another round from DoorDash and continue gaming by myself until 5 or 6 a.m. or something. The zombies uh, on rafters. Or one of you jump for you. Oh, I got her. I got her. Oh, I got her. Handy. I'm hacking. Who killed the zombie? I did. Me. Ow. How did you do that? How did you do that? You're uh, a hacker. Uh, Mark, why are you always so upset? Like, I'm so pissed off at you, Dustin. Yeah. You're just <laughs> pissed mad <laughs> all the time. Every time, you, the function I'm not, every time you're not talking, I'm smiling. And every time you talk, I just get a massive frown on my face. <laughs> <laughs> Right, let me know when you're oh, you did it again. Oh my god. <laughs> you're so dumb. You're then so my dumb. smile was starting to form and then it just fucking... <laughs> you're so, you're so cringe. Luckily, I landed a well-paying job as quarantine was slowly being lifted. And that's when things changed. Because of my job, I guess you can say I grew out of gaming. I looked at gaming as something I could care less about. I still keep up with gaming news and all and track new releases, but nothing would really spark my interest. It came to the point I was doing it from residual instinct from when gaming was a much bigger hobby or played a much bigger bigger role in my life. After all, my YouTube feed was trained to mostly have gaming content from all those years. My gaming life the first year on the new job was almost non-existent. When I was at home doing nothing, I choose to keep laying in bed and watch random YouTube videos instead. After work, after a long late night shift, I'd rather go out and do stuff with my coworkers instead of going home to the comfort of my bedroom to play video games. Gaming became such a huge afterthought. My PC would literally just sit there and collect dust for almost a whole year. The moment I knew I've officially grown out of gaming was when a coworker asked me why don't I just fully upgrade my PC since I was the highest grossing worker there and that in less than a month of work I'd have a monster rig. My answer was that I just simply didn't care and words I never thought I'd ever utter. I don't really play games anymore. As soon as those words came out, I shocked myself. Not only something that was such a huge part of me, a majority of my life is something that didn't mean much to me anymore, but I was reminded that the rig sitting on my desk was meant for gaming. I literally forgot that thing was a gaming PC. My first year in my new job, I met so many people and formed so many new friends. I was also working out a lot because I gotta get all that quarantine weight off somehow. I was just so busy with my newfound life after quarantine. When I wasn't working, I was either at the gym or hanging out with friends. Gaming literally didn't have a place in my life at that point. Then sometime in mid-2022, inflation occurred as an aftermath of the world shutting down and certain supplies were still in short demand. And if that alone wasn't a problem, gas prices were also skyrocketing. Luckily, I live in Texas and we have our own gasoline to help combat that price increase or something like that. I don't know. I slept through econ class. Crazy enough, my tactic to save money was actually to stay home and play video games. Not to mention Elden Ring came out a lot long ago and a seamless co-op mod was a thing. So yeah, me and the OG squad were back together grinding it out. Oh. Oh. Okay, I'll take it. God, it's Michael B. Jordan. Oh Shut God. the fuck up! Paul's gonna be a god gamer guy. Shut up, bro! Shut up! Oh! Shut the fuck up! Alongside it, League of Legends came back into the picture, but we don't talk about it. Even though I was gaming again, I still had rather a negative outlook on it. Don't get me wrong, my newfound attitude towards gaming was absolutely liberating, and we'll come back around to that later. But I can't just help to look at my PC and go, ew video games. When someone would unironically call themselves a gamer, I'd go, ew, do you shower? Actually, that's pretty normal even amongst, well, gamers. I'm just joking, all peace. The point is, even if it wasn't due to circumstances, I'd rather be going out with my friends than staying in and last hitting damn minions all game. 
I don't exactly want to participate in team fights either. Well, whatever, they got it. So this is where things really slowly started to take a turn for me and where gaming stands in my life. Something about playing games around that time was that I just felt more relaxed than ever. I never felt the pressure to perform, didn't have the pressure to win. I felt more free to play more recklessly in multiplayer games and not give a care. The concept of consequences never really occurred in my mind. If something goes wrong, I just shrug it off and keep being myself. I also felt a lot more recluse than ever. I found myself gravitating towards single player games and ignoring Discord mentions. For once, this was when I truly learned to play games for myself and for myself only. I don't care to win. I don't care to be upset over a ranked emotion. Headlines that corporations just did something sleazy in the gaming industry again? Oh well, move on. Oh, this game is only fun with friends? Don't care, as long as I'm enjoying myself, it doesn't matter. Gamers are angry with Activision again because they pulled a stunt with Call of Duty. Big whoop, doesn't affect me, who cares? All these things that don't matter or directly affect my life just don't upset me anymore. I have officially become what you would call a casual. They're toes. Oh, watch, this. Oh, <laughs> watch a sick peek. Watch a sick peek. Watch a sick peek. Oh! <laughs> oh, someone just ran through the pass. Ah, uh, I'm going crazy, bro. I'm going crazy, brother. Jumped in on 90. On 90. Nice, last one's on 90. Nice, Ooh. dog. Ooh. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. <laughs> this is what I mean by my newfound attitude towards gaming has been so liberating. I'm an adult now. I have different priorities now and a future to build for myself. And gaming doesn't have a place in it or not to the same degree as before. One of the greatest life lessons I learned and luckily I learned it early in life was our greatest currency we can give is our time. Because once time passes, it's gone and we can't get it back unlike any other materialistic possession. So it is important to be wise with our time and be more mindful with it and how we spend it and who we spend it with. I'm much older now and I realize that I don't want to be angry over these sort of things. Gaming at best is a social tool for me now. I don't always play for the art of the game, but I play to spend time with the people I'm playing with. If I ever play for the sake of the game, then it has to be a really special game. In my case, Rainbow Six Siege. Despite all its insane flaws, even then, Winning, ranking, or even bad business decisions made by Ubisoft still don't bother me once I'm no longer in the game. Huh? What if someone just jumped <laughs> off? Okay. Now that's not to say if a game piques my interest, it doesn't mean I'm not going to give it a shot. Whether it is a priority for me to get around to it is a different discussion. But I still have a soft spots for some of my favorite franchises such as the Yakuza series, Pokemon, Resident Evil, Halo, and most importantly Borderlands. If any of these franchises releases something new, I'm extremely likely to still play these games. Then came 2023. It was quite a big year for gaming. The year of remakes with Dead Space and Resident Evil 4 paving a way for action survival horror to make a comeback and Alan Wake 2 as a cherry on top to show this genre is here to stay. Me personally, I even got a Like a Dragon Ishin remake and the man who erased his name was such a damn good spinoff showing what Kiryu was doing around the same time Yakuza 7 Like a Dragon was happening. I'm not very involved with fighting games but from what I hear they had their fair share as well with Street Fighter 6 and Mortal Kombat 1 being quite the hits. Also, must we not forget the gargantuous release of possibly the game of the decade. Oh wait, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And stepping up. Wow. That is crazy. Yes. Oh. 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 Oh you, my you do, you do, god! You do, you do. Put that in the montage, Paul. Put it in the montage. Easy, baby. Now it's 2024. How do I feel about gaming now? 
probably back to square one when my adult life really took off. I just don't really care anymore. This year, I've actually been making time for myself to be more recluse, so video games are back on the board. However, I'm in no rush or care to talk about the latest AAA in the industry if I'm not interested. If anything, I find myself playing older games a lot more than newer games. The first half of this year, all I played was Halo MCC and freaking Bloons Tower Defense, the best dopamine simulator ever. Okay, round 100, nothing but ice monkeys. Let's see how this goes. Fuck! Replaying Doom and Doom Eternal was also an absolute blast later on in the year. And also replaying Borderlands 2 right now, and this game has aged quite well. I even intend to replay the DS generation of Pokemon games because the new ones aren't exactly the vibe. I still wouldn't call myself a gamer per se where it stands in priorities in comparison to everything else, it's so closer to the bottom. In fact, I don't think I'd ever want to be called a gamer, period. Okay, let's be real. Some of y'all are kind of overdramatic. I respect the passion and whatever crusade you guys are on in holding game publishers accountable. I can also understand why it's such a big deal for you to pour time and dedication into it. Just don't try to drag me into it or expect me to do the same. And also, remember to shower and use deodorant. It's only 10 minutes out of your day. Come on now. The stereotype is there for a reason. I can't take this shit no more, man. 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 I hate my life. A couple other things I want to address. One of the gamers asked me if my girl wants me to stop playing games. Would I? At the time, I barely played games as is, so probably yeah. And if she's the right girl for me, I'd give up a lot more than just gaming. Another question imposed, why play games if you don't try to win? Because winning isn't always fun. Put it this way, I'd rather have fun losing than stress out winning. Like I said, I'm too old to be getting mad at things that don't directly affect me. Examples of fun losing and stressed out winning? League of Legends itself. Sometimes, I'm just fed an absolutely dominating lane. It's been literal years since that has happened, but that's besides the point. Somehow, we still lose due to other factors, such as my other lanes lost harder or whatever, or the enemy team was just fed even harder. When I'm fed, it's fun. And if we lose that game, it doesn't matter to me because I still had fun. Sometimes, when you want to win in lane, or game, the game in general, you have to play in such a specific way and be on your feet every second so you don't make the wrong move. Yeah, the adrenaline is fun at times, but other times it's not. So by the time we win, it wasn't even worth all the stress and I'd rather experience the previous example I mentioned before. Now, you might say, uh, well, why don't you get good? Uh, no, cause that would go against what I've been saying this entire video. Besides, Gaming is a social tool at best for me. So with all that being said, I know up to this point, most of my videos have been movie or cinema centric, but there are still a lot of things I want to talk about when it comes to gaming. And with my newly structured schedule, there's going to be a lot more time on my hands to play video games. Besides, I realistically don't think I could ever go cold turkey on it anyways. Not without extreme reasons anyways. As I've said, it has played such a huge role in a majority of my life. It's hard to say goodbye. My attitude might change towards it, where it stands in my life might change, but never goodbye. Also, who knows? Since I'm going to be making more content, maybe it'll rise up in priority. Anyways, that's all. See you nerds. All that jumping for what? Come here, come here, come here, there's a bunch of stuff over here. Wait, huge. And we're out. Okay, that was a fake door. <laughs> oh, yeah. I see some- oh! oh my god! Oh no, I'm dead, I'm dead. Alright, uh, goodbye. I'm dead, I'm dead. <laughs> oh, wait, that noise. Guys, help me please, help me please, help me. Uh, so much stuff. It wasn't me! <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh, please! You guys are the worst. I hate you guys. I, hate you. I don't know what to do. There's no way there's no more. Please! Oh! What the? <laughs> Who tripped it? Yeah, that room's clear, Dan. It's clear, Justin. You can go in. There's one in the uh, bedroom. I can't. I'm gonna jump bar's in. Bar's clear. Oh, wait. No, one in bar. One in bar. I think it's Thorn. Alright, I'm gonna. They just lit. They just lit. They just lit. I'm at the door. One's in, one's Vigil's in, uh, dead. Uh, he is lit Brooks up. Lit. Got him. Oh, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. Whoever did that? 
Oh, one's coming from blue. One's coming. Fenrir's tagged. I cannot, I cannot see this freaking one. blue. Jaeger blue. Jaeger blue. Jaeger blue. Well, mine's in red. Yeah, top blue stairs. Yeah, oh, he's there. Dead, 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 dead. On your right, Paul. On your right. Nice. Good job. Oh, there was a chunk that did it too. That's hilarious. Oh. One gym, one gym. Yeah, last one in shower. Last one in shower. Last one in shower. Everyone, I want it. Go, 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 go. Just Someone throw it. Okay. Nice. Let's nice. go. Let's nice trade. Nice trade. Nice trade. Good I know Justin would have done that. Justin would have just stood there doing nothing. What is up? You are bottom frags. <laughs> it's because Andy fucking sabotaged me. Doing <laughs> what, bro? You I, felt, want me to I felt like I felt like Julius Caesar the way you fucking left my ass. <laughs> They're on me. Fuck you, also. He's he's on the door. He's on the door. He's he's peeking. Habana's outside on the hallway. He's outside in the hallway. Good guy. Nice, good job. There might be one. There might be one more. Diffuse down. Diffuse down in hallway. Got Blackbeard. Nice. Yeah, on, on top. nice good job. Woo, oh, bitches. I'm coming, y'all. Beagle. He's back, he's back, he's back. <laughs> That's what I killed, huh? We got million. We got million now. It's over. It really is over, actually. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna disconnect. <laughs> I'm going to keep stealing my fucking kills. <laughs>